Hi there, and welcome to um, the solution to experiment three of the chemistry practical manual. Now, the topic here is the separation and purification of substances. Now, what's here is this analyzing or synthesizing a particular substance usually involves separations and purifications. The experiments in this section illustrate some method used by chemists to achieve these. A, the first one is there is mechanical separation. So what's the procedure there? Procedure, step one, it says, place one gram of iron powder in a wash glass and one gram of sulfur powder in another. So I have two glasses there. One has iron powder and the other one has sulfur powder. Now it says, bring a magnet near each material and record your observation. All right, so let's start with the, um, since they mentioned iron powder, let's start with the iron powder. So I'll start with um, iron powder. Let me start with the iron powder there. All right, so for the iron powder, I brought a magnet close to the iron powder. What was the observation? Now I observed that, um, I observed that it got attracted to the magnet, right? And this is because the iron powder is magnetic. So I can just say, um, I can just say, so I can just say, it got attracted. Um, it got attracted to the magnet. Hence, it is magnetic. So I can say the iron powder. It is magnetic. So this is my observation when I place the magnet close to it. The next thing there was the sulfur powder. So I'll just come down here to sulfur powder. All right, for sulfur powder, what do I have there? Now I observed that when I brought the magnet close to the powder, to the sulfur powder, um, there was no reaction, all right? That proves that it is not magnetic. So I can say it was not attracted It was not attracted by the magnet. By uh, let me write it here by the magnet, comma, hence it is not magnetic all right so i have this okay so this becomes uh, my observation all right so i've recorded this next one says mix the iron mix the iron and sulfur so so the first one i, I separated them i had my iron powder in a separate um in a separate wash glass and then i had my sulfur powder in another wash glass when I brought them close to, or when I brought a magnet close to them, the iron powder attracted, which means it is magnetic. The sulfur powder had no reaction. It was not attracted. And it means that it is not magnetic. Now, the, the step two here is saying, mix the iron and sulfur and bring the magnet near the mixture. So, in, in the step two now, I am now mixing both the iron powder and the sulfur. I'm mixing them together. So I now have a mixture of iron and sulfur and sulfur. And they said, bring the magnet near the mixture. Record the observation. So what was the observation? My observation was this. I observed that. So I can say, I observed that. I observed that the mixture was actually magnetic. Yep. So I observed that the mixture was attracted
by the magnet. Yep, by the magnet. This is because this is okay. Let's say use the word due. This is due to the presence of ion particles or ion filings in the mixture. In the mixture. So what? So hence we can say we can say that the mixture hence we can say that the mixture is magnetic. All right. So this is um all right. So this is my um observation. All right. So this is the first um case. Let's look at the next one there, which should be on filtration. All right, let's look at this part on filtration. Now the I says, into the beaker provided, add about 20 to 30 milliliter of distilled water, pour out the chalk dust given into the beaker and stir with a glass rod. What you have is called a suspension, all right? So um, a suspension occurs when the solute, which is the solid, does not dissolve completely in the solvent. So if I pour chalk into water there, chalk cannot completely dissolve. All right. If I pour chalk into water, you see be seeing some chalk particles there. That's why it's called a suspension. All right. Now, the next, next thing here says allow to settle for about 10 to 20 minutes. Now, when they say allow to settle, it means some of the chalk particles or chalk dust there should be allowed to settle for about 10 to 20 minutes and then filter using the filter paper provided. The instructor would demonstrate how to use a filter paper. After filtration, what you obtain on the filter paper is called a residue. All right? Residue. The liquid that passed through the filter paper is called the filtrate. So identify residue. Now, residue means, um, they said after filtration, what you obtain on the filter paper is called a residue. So here's the thing. I have, I have chalk, right? Chalk dust or chalk. I pour chalk into water there. Now, what I observed was this. I still had some chalk particles undissolved in the um, combination of chalk and water. Now, they said allow it to settle for about 10 to 20 minutes. Now, they said use that, that, um, that mixture you have there. Pour it through or pour it through a filter paper. Now, you observe that you have some particles of solid still on the filter paper while you have that some liquid has passed through the filter paper. And now you're, you're, you're being told that the, the solid that remains on the filter paper is called a residue, while the liquid that passes through is called the filtrate. So which of them is the residue? The residue obviously would be the chalk um, or the chalk solid, as you, as you want to call it. All right, so the residue has, has to be the chalk. Um, okay, so I'll have chalk particle. All right, so let's say chalk particle or chalk solute if you want to. Uh, which okay, so let me use solute. So you can call the residue as chalk solute or chalk particle. Any of them is still fine. The filtrate will be water, of course. So the filtrate there will be water or the liquid that was used. I think this was water here. All right, I think it was water. Right, so you can call the filtrate as water. Okay, so let's let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so before then, we said this is called a chalk solute or chalk particle. So you choose any one and call it right. So chalk solute or chalk particle. Then you have water there as right so i have this all right so moving on um the next thing here says the b part here says two immiscible liquids that's liquids that cannot be mixed can be separated using a separatory funnel all right 
Solution A is ordinary tap water. Solution B is kerosene. Now, for this, I'm mixing both kerosene and tap water. It said, mix both solutions thoroughly in a volumetric flask. Set up the separatory funnel as demonstrated by the instructor. Pour contents of the flask into a separatory funnel while the tap is closed. Open the tap and obtain each liquid separately into a beaker. Record the volume of each liquid. All right? So I'll record the volume of A and as well as the volume of B. Now this experiment has already been carried out. And from what I have here, the volume of A from my own recording was about 52 milliliter. So I have about I had about 52 milliliter as the volume of solution A. Why the volume of solution B? I had about 39 um, milliliter. So I had this too. If you did not get these values, please just work with the value you had. That's all, right? All right. So I have these two. Next up, three says the given sample is a mixture. All right, the next one here, three says the given sample is a mixture of common salt and sand. Add distilled water to the mixture and stir. Filter the mixture. What do you have as residue and filtrate? So for this, I have a mixture of, um, okay, so let me draw this. I had sand. I had sand and salt. So let's say I had sand and salt. So sand plus salt. I have this. Excuse me. Sun plus salt. I com this is in one mixture. Combine this here with water. So if I combine this with water, what happens? You observe that um, if I combine this with water, you observe that the salt will completely dissolve in the water while the sand particle will not dissolve. So I will now have a solution in which the salt is completely dissolved, but then you see be seeing some particles of sand. Now with this, now you're asked to um, you're asked to pour this mixture through a filter paper. Now remember that if you pour this mixture through a filter paper, there the solutes or the particles will be left on the filter paper while the liquid will go through or pass through the filter paper. Now they're asking you what is the re residue. All right, which particle do you observe? All right, which um, solid particle was left? That's called the residue. This the particle that was left was just sand. Don't forget, salt dissolved completely, so salt cannot be there. The salt will go through with the water. Why? Because salt completely dissolves. But since sand cannot dissolve in water completely, then we can say the residue is sand particle. Right. So sand would be. Um, the solid that will still be on the filter paper. So sand particle is my residue. Let's look at filtrate. So what will be the filtrate? Now remember that in my filtrate, I will not just have water passing through, but water, the water also contains salt, all right, because the salt was completely dissolved in water. So hence, what will pass through is not just water, but water mixed with salt, and hence we can say salty water. So the future there becomes salty water. Okay, so the big part here says dry the residue in the oven and leave to dry in the laboratory. Heat the filtrate gently and evaporate to dryness. What product is obtained? All right, so it says results. The product is now what we have here is this so i have um the filtrate here don't forget the filtrate we have here is salty water that means water combined with salt or salt dissolved in water we are asked to heat the filtrate when you heat the filtrate what you observe is that the water will evaporate leaving just salt particles left all right so the 
the result is this. They ask you what product is obtained. The answer there is salt um, particle, right? So the product obtained is simply salt particle. All right. So salt particle is the product obtained. All right. So this is how we solve this question. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed the video or not. And also subscribe to this channel. And finally, make sure you share to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in the next class.